Hello friends, welcome back to Tech with Viresh. In the continuation to our series on step-by-step -step understanding, hands-on understanding of Spark and Scala systems. In that, in the continuation of that series, today we'll look uh, how we can connect our Spark and Scala code with the uh, data lake. And for this particular example, we are using the Azure data lake. We'll see how we can uh, connect uh, the Spark and Scala code uh, with the data in the data lake and how we can perform the operations like read and write. So in the same series, in the last video, we discussed how to set up the Spark Scala project with Eclipse. We'll extend the same example and see how we can perform the read and writes from the IDE, from the Eclipse IDE itself, which will help us to fasten our, our development cycles. So guys, let's start. So let's jump on to the Azure instance. So the first thing we need is an Azure data lake. So I've created one instance of Azure data lake. And if you look into this data lake instance right now, the access control thing, it's a fresh instance of a data lake. So no roles are assigned. So there is no connectivity. Access connectivity has been established right now. To make that connection with the Azure Data Lake from the Spark systems, we need a Azure Active Directory. So we'll create one Azure Active Directory and assign the read and write access on this particular uh, data lake, Azure Data Lake that we have created. Demo Tech with Viresh this is the name of the data lake. Let's do, try to create an Azure Active Directory for the same. Click on Azure Active Directory. Here, what we need to do is on the left hand side, click on app registrations. <clears throat> Let's add a new AAD for our connectivity. Yeah, let's name it as Tech with Viresh AAD. And let's click on the register created the application right? and we can see the details like endpoint, the client ID and the other coordinates which we used to establish the connectivity. Now what we need to do is we need to assign the read and write access to this AD app on our data lake that we have created. right? So this is our data lake, demo tech with Viresh. Now let's go to the access control. In the access control, let's try to add that app we have created. In the role, we, let's choose contributor. And let's try to find out. Yes, tech with Viresh AAD, that's what we have created. And click on save. So now this particular AAD would have the access connectivity with this particular data lake. Right. Now the next thing that we'll have to do from the Azure portal perspective is let's go to the data lake again. And here go to data explorer. In the data explorer, click on this option which says access. Here in the access, we'll add our AD as well on the root folder. Let's again search for our tech with Vigresh AD. This is the one. Let's select it. <clears throat> Let's give it retry in a little bit. All the access for now. This folder and all the children's. So it will have a cascading access, verified access. And let's select more open access control for now. Let's do OK. So that is the thing that we need from the portal perspective. Now this particular AAD uh, has the read, write and execute full access on our data lake. And we have given it on the root folders so that all the folders now that will be created under this particular data lake would uh, have all the read, write and execute access to this particular AAD that we have 
created right now let's again go back to the ad that we have and let's pick up the coordinates that we need to establish the connectivity let's see which all coordinates do we need if i go to the code <coughs> this is the code which we used in the first video in the series to set up eclipse project here we created these uh, data frames now the same data frames will try to read and write from the lake right and to make that connectivity established we'll have to add the connectivity parameters at this park session level itself so we'll have to add these four lines of code and these values of client id credentials and url are the one which will get from the ad that we have created right so let's look at what all what all things do we need so these are the four line of course the first line says the method of connectivity is client credentials so we'll use client credentials to establish that connectivity the second one is the client id we'll see where we'll pick the client id the next one is the credential the password and the fourth one is the endpoint url let's see now where we can pick these the corresponding values from if we go to the azure portal right <clears throat> so this is the client id that we need to use in our code let's copy this client id that is the client id which will go in here so that's the client id and uh, this is the endpoint url oauth2 token endpoint v1 version 1 let's copy this that is the endpoint url right. and the last thing we need is the credential so let's go back to the azure portal let's try to generate one credential so click on the left hand side click on certificates and secrets go in there and says generate new client secret then select whatever time you want to go say add and it will generate one client secret let's copy this client secret and we'll put it into our code that is it from the code perspective to establish that connectivity <coughs> now pick up the base url for our data lake and we'll try to read and write from that particular data lake so to get the base url we'll go here to the data explorer on our data lake you can do folder properties and select this url demo tech with village dot azure data lake store dot adl so that will be the connecting url to do the reads and write and let's go to our eclipse and the first example is the same data frames that we have created in the first video and we are trying to save it into this data lake inside this folder as emp the next one saved in another folder as department and then we did a join and save the result into the result folder <coughs> now if we have the established connectivity as we did on, it did in a spark session just run it from the Eclipse ID itself. Right click, run as Scala application. So, we'll create those data frames and save them as a par key files into the data lake. running in okay the first one is created employee data frame see here yeah we got the employee folder we'll have a pack we still is still writing so it's a temporary file that we have so it should be we should have a data now yeah this is a part file this is a part file that is created all the folders are done 
Yes. So all the folders are created into our data lake. So now that established connectivity is working fine, right? The only thing we'll have to do is we'll have to set these configurations into our Spark session. Similarly, we can also do a read from the lake, the same link. We can go to the employee folder. Just click in here, pick the folder properties and pick this URL. Pick this URL. Just trying to read the data, EMP employee data, which we have just saved into the link. Yeah. yeah, so that has been read and displayed, same data. So both our read and writes are working fine. So that's connectivity is all set. So let's see again these these four lines the first one is a mode we have selected client credentials second one is a client id client id that you need to this is the client id right this is what will go in here next is the client credential that we have generated and the last one is the refresh url and for refresh url go to endpoint and then we'll have to select the OAuth 2.1 token endpoint v1. This is the URL we need to make the connectivity. So that's how we can uh, establish the connectivity with, between the Spark Scala core and the Azure data link and do the read and write. And uh, that's it in this particular video. The entire code is available in the GitHub, in my GitHub repo, and uh, the you can find the link in the in the description. Guys, that's it in this particular video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead. Bye-bye.